Well, it's that time again. Just wanted to come out and uh, bring you a little bit of word this evening. Um, our subject today was on the subject of trouble. Um, we all have trouble. It's mentioned in the Bible some 200 times. We all face trouble. Um, you can't hardly go anywhere and do anything without there being some kind of obstacle that's in front of you. But you know, you can experience comfort even in the midst of trouble if you know Jesus, if you know who Jesus is. Um we took some verses today from the book of Psalms. Um, you know, in the book of Psalms, you get godly information. Um, you get uh, a witness from the book of Psalms. You get the truth of God's word when you look at the Psalms. And as I said a minute ago, you also get comfort and you get a future. Now, there were some verses that I used, and I've got them marked here. In Psalm chapter 9 and verse number 9, I'm just going to read this to you. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. You know, that's a great thing to know. You notice that it said the Lord. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in the time of trouble. We didn't stop there. We went on over to um, chapter 27, in verse number five, it says, For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. That lets me know that God has a big pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. You know, that's good information to know because it shows me how that the Lord is able to protect if I flip my Bible on over to chapter 37, in verse 39, he says this, But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. You know, as long as that you remember that you have the Lord, what else do you need? He's the only one that gives salvation. You can't give salvation to yourself. There's a scripture over in Psalm chapter 60 and verse number 11. I like this verse right here. It says in verse 11, Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. You know, God is a help in a time of trouble, but man is vain. And when we try to use man's ways and man's religion, then that doesn't work. It doesn't work. Here's one that I found that I found years ago. We just talked about salvation just a minute ago. In Psalm 91, in verse number 15, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. But he doesn't stop there. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You know, when I look at this, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. Well, you know, years ago, my intent was to call on him 
but I didn't call on him in salvation. I wasted a lot of time and I didn't call on him in salvation, but yet he was faithful because he says, I will be with him in trouble. One of the worst times in my life was when I was about 27 years old. I guess it was in around the mid 80s. Um, I went through a lot of personal hurt, discouragement, disappointment. But he says, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Now, you know what? He delivered me, but he didn't deliver me in the mid-80s. He delivered me in 2007. And he says, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, you know, I didn't have salvation at the time when he delivered me, but he made a promise. And I believe he kept to his word of that promise. And then we find in Psalm 119, which is the longest chapter in the Bible, 119 and verse 143, trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delight. Now, you know, for years, I couldn't go on the commandments. The question that I, I had to ask myself, do you have the Lord? I think that would be a question that I got out of this chapter 9 and verse 9. I didn't have the Lord. Uh, I thought I did. I'll just be honest with you, I thought I did. In verse 27 and verse 5, I got the question of, are you covered by the Lord? See, he told us that he would put us in his pavilion. And then the next question was, is he powerful to you? How many people do you think he's powerful to? And then when we got into chapter 60 and verse 11, that's where we come up with that one about the flesh you know there's people that have the spirit of God and then they have the flesh but which one do you think is greater I heard one lady say today that well the spirit is greater well that's true but a lot of people don't know that because they don't have the spirit all they have is vain worship that they can do Anything vain is not of God. And then in the 91st Psalm is my firsthand experience. You know, it's great to remember 20 more years ago when I was going through all that aggravation that God was faithful. And then regardless, in this last chapter that we read in Psalm 119, Regardless of the situation, the Christian will win. If you're saved today, you're on the winning side. You're on the winning team. But some people's going to go and say, well, Brother Ken, there's got to be more evidence than that. Well, I've read y'all six verses, but I want to go over here to a place where I ended up and a woman had actually quoted this, these verses for me because she knew them at heart. And I know them at heart. But if you want more proof, is John 14. John 14, he was talking to Peter, and Peter was asking the Lord, why can't I go with thee? And... Jesus said, you're going to deny me thrice. Listen at this. He gets done talking to Peter there, and then he jumps into chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Put yourself in Peter's shoes just a minute. If Peter had just got told by the Lord that you can't follow me now, 
and that before the cock crows, you're going to deny me thrice. And then Jesus says here, let not your heart be troubled. Do you think it would trouble me to know that I would end up being able to hear something that would cause me to sort of get disturbed a little bit? Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. See, Jesus knew that Peter believed in God and that Peter knew that he believed in God and he believed in him. But what about us? Could he ask that question of you and I? Could he put a question mark behind that? Ye believe in God? Question mark. Believe also in me, question mark. But listen to what he says. In my father's house are many mansions. You know, there's a lot of printed Bibles out there that says that in my father's house are many rooms. But that's not what Jesus said, not in my Bible. He said many mansions. I think I would get a little bit aggravated to know that all I had was a room prepared for me. He's got mansions prepared for the people that know him. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. There's no troubles there. In the place of where the mansions is, there's no troubles at all. See, I told um, someone, and I don't have anything here. I'm just going to use this piece of paper right here. Pretend this piece of paper right here is the borderline of God. It's a square. And God is in the borderline of this paper. Well, say if salvation laid inside the truth of God all around this paper. But say we decide, instead of being inside the paper, we want to live where the tip of my finger is. And salvation is in, in and around the four corners of the paper. God is not going to step out of his word to justify you. He will go to you. He will come to you. But he's going to aim you back to staying in his word. He's not going to come to you and save you and leave you out of the realm of salvation. See, the realm of salvation is all four corners of this paper right here. He's not going to leave you out here in darkness and you name in the name of Christ. So what you got to do is ask yourself, no matter how close you are around the edge, that's religion. All of this here around the edge is nothing but religion. People eat up with religion. Religion is everywhere. The question that you got to ask yourself, just like this verse right here, ye believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house are many mansions. Do you believe that? The Bible says, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I hope you know him today. I hope you reach out and you call on him. Don't wait. Time is running out. You're not guaranteed another moment. Thank y'all for listening.